It means he has not developed my own, you know, he, he knows it in theory, but he doesn't, he has not become flesh in him. The word has not become flesh. Attitude to women is such of honor, first of all. Not availability of, you know, for example, why did I notice it and he didn't notice it? Not the first time. You know, I don't talk for the first time. Because I've noticed three times. So, for example, if I were in his place, I would have said, bro, come and sit here. You know. Yes. <laughs> she shouldn't be carrying that load. <laughs> uh -huh, you see, he's fixing it now. This is beyond me. Why? Because they are sitting next to me. Just put it on the yeah. table. Yeah. Okay, no, no, you have to be there. You know, when you know when there is no option, when you don't have any other option, no other person in the whole room or any vicinity, that's okay. But the attitude, it must be on, on the level of your subconscious that a woman, first of all, deserves and demands gentleness. A woman demands and deserves not just gentleness, but f f uh, softness, what do you call it? fragility so you know when you are when you are in a situation to either ask a woman or a man to carry something of course you shouldn't even come to your mind that is a woman but what he is doing is that he's just thinking of the work to do the job as far if I mean, because he needs to do some things and he needed to give the thing to somebody to relieve him he is not considering other principles he didn't even think about it, that anything could be wrong. He didn't even know that she's a woman at that point. So she's, well, the problem is that he's not noticing a woman in her. He just, for him, as far as he's concerned, he's just a human being that could carry the thing. So he's, so he's more oriented at the work that needs to be done, not considering, you know, being, you know, I have, he knows about it. I have a book that's got how to be here, how to be in the here and now. He's, uh, if he had been in the here and now, he would have noticed that, that, you know, no, that's a lady. A lady, first of all, your first reaction to any woman, your wife, your mother, your sister, any woman at all, should be that of gentleness. Should be that of honor. Should be that of to try to protect her. So how do you protect her by giving her that load? Is that not what I spoke about yesterday? Protection, yeah, identity, uh, uh, pro no, provision, and stability. So we, we try to make them feel good and welcome and comfortable. If you have listened to my uh, family series, you will know exactly why. There are reasons for it. And the reasons for it goes from hormones, se uh, organization of hormones in the body of men and women, and the difference is a big one. And also because of sensitivity, and also because women must always be protected and always be guarded from any kind of uh, anything that would discomfort or you know that would make them uncomfortable a woman by herself she's already uncomfortable just by the factor of things going on within her so you know the first re the response to a woman should be to relieve her of further discomfort but the Western world doesn't do that. Because the Western world has taken money and has put mammon at the head of everything. Mammon is supreme. So either you are a woman or you are a woman, they don't care as long as you can walk. <laughs> yes, and make money. So they don't, they don't respect the nature of women. And so they push you to go and work also. And they, if you don't want to do it, they put so much demands and uh, bills and everything that she will have to go and do this, something. So because of that, sometimes you could get used to that and you think that that is the norm. But the norm, with the way God created it, that's why God says she's the weaker vessel. Mm -hmm. So always wash out for her. That's what it means. Always wash out for her. Always wash out for her. Always be in God for her. But Pastor, I want to give you a challenge. But the most important thing for me is for him to hear me. <laughs> and I think he's hearing. When huh? you were teaching yesterday about... Give her the microphone, she said. A man should help another woman after he must have helped his wife yes. off the board. Yes. With the African or Nigerian, yes. right? If 
Suppose me and my husband goes out yeah. and he helped me down the bus yeah. and I see him help to go Microfo and help another, microphone. Microphone. I see him go and help another, that another lady down. Yeah. He's going to be helped for, for that's him. the way we that oh, because you want to that's the way we think. African mentality. Yeah. So that a lot of people think like that too. Exactly. If you if you hear of the if you go, if you want to know what people think about me, mm. go to Google. Mm. And rise under the lights and sex. Mm. You will hear all kind of stories <laughs> just because of this attitude. Mm. But I will not bow to blackmail mm. and to you know rumors and deceptions and lie and you know at the expense of uh, truth. Mm. For me, what matters is the truth, the truth of the word of God and God's mindset. Okay. So we let people think anything they want to think, but me, I know the truth, mm. and the truth that I know does not permit me to you know, to go and just please crowd. Okay. So if, if I'm going to now refrain from doing what I know, then I'm driven by fear. Or I am driven by public opinion. No, I would rather be driven by God's principles and God's standard than... And also, another thing is that if you don't notice small, small things like this, one day you will get used to your wife and your children and women around you. They will become customized. You will become you will be so used to them that you will begin to bypass them also the way you bypass the four other women too. You know, you get used to, you, if you don't make it your own intentional culture and something you do consciously all the time to be always be aware of the right attitude to women, next time you, the thing you will discover that you begin to just demand from her. You know, and that's how things break down, how relationships break down. Then there will be no bond, bond, uh, boundaries. So there will be no boundary before between women and men and everybody. So women will be now be treated always as, as laborers, you know, just like anybody else. Nothing makes out look special. But women must be special. And you as a man must make her special. And, you know, you, no matter, you must make, if you are present in any room with any woman, old, young, you must make her feel special. Tell her some compliments. Give her a hand. No, leave the seat for her. To help her carry the share. Do something to, you have to always do something to make us. But if you don't do that to your environment, then you will not do it for your wife too. If you have been to the, our church, Embassy of God Church, you will notice that our men, they kind of try to take care of the ladies when they are going to the stage or coming back from the stage or everywhere. They are learning still. They are, not all of them are perfect, but they are, still, they are learning to do it. Because a man is, is a stability factor. A man must always bring stability, bring peace, bring comfort. Just because I'm around, you should already be feeling comfort. Even if I'm not related to you. Because I will notice you. I will say something about your ear. Like I saw a picture. I said something about a picture today. He didn't even know I saw it. <laughs> That's true, but I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, always do something to make the people that are around you, especially as a man, be a means and an enemy. Nipakazo and Niatvleka is such a small threat. Be a means and an agent of God. Be the image of God in everything. In all things that you do, I'm sure you are not going to be get, getting annoyed at me. I hope you are learning. No. Thank you, sir. Uh, I mean, no, I'm talking to him now. No, you let him respond. I mean, that's the least response to give about anger. I mean, uh, thank you for the opportunity to learn and thank you for sharing. I mean, we're working on ourselves and it's a huge opportunity. But did you notice that you don't, you never, you, you need to give the book yeah, to Pastor, anybody around? I noticed, I, I noticed, I, was, I did, I, I also used to feel somehow about it, but then, like you said, I just wanted to get the job done. And yeah. So you elevated the work uh, above the man. Yeah. So I wanted to get the job done and uh, go, but I, I would work on myself and get better. So you know, saw the sense and the logic in what I was doing. Oh yes, yeah. Oh yes. That's the most important thing. At least so that you don't think that we're shunting you. No, Sandy. Mm. 
All right. <laughs> well, uh, don't worry. I will release the books about men. <laughs> How men should behave themselves. Don't worry. The books are coming. Uh -huh, they are coming. <laughs> All right, dear friends, uh, you, you joined us at a very good spot. Uh, Dr. Sunday was um, sharing uh, something he noticed that I was doing that wasn't right. And uh, we, got live, we got live during that conversation. And um, I'm grateful that um, Dr. Sunday used my own example to correct me. And you were also opportune to learn at least one or two things from the correction. Uh, yes, as men, we have to be responsible and we have to be men. We have to be foundations and we have to not just know it in our head, like the story said, but it must be our daily practice consciously. All right. So I would go to the first book that Dr. Sunday talked about earlier. No, before you go to that book, am I, what do you think, since you are living with me in this house, is this something that I just talk about? Because that's what some people will go and say. Or you, you, what was what notice from my own lifestyle, my own attitude? Dr. Sunday, from your attitude, uh, so women and ladies are like, um, like gold. Like they are. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I know exactly the the shifts that I experienced from my mindset about women and ladies before I met you. I could I could come into a room and sit down and don't even care about a lady who is looking for a seat and I sit down comfortably. But as I come close, I notice that it's like I'm I'm sick. I mean, many times we maybe we are having a conversation. I, I remember the first time I started working with you, and you want you want us to sit close to you. And I, I'm, as a as a man, I'm very strong, so I'm the first person to get my chair, and I go get my chair and I sit down. And there's only saying that what's wrong with your brain? <laughs> if you know that it does like this very well. It's like because the women, they would most time because the women who are here, they also don't want to feel like they want to wait for a man to carry for them. Mm -hmm. So they go ahead and want to carry their chairs. And there was only saying, What's wrong with you? Can't you see that she's a woman and you want her to carry that chair? So you you think you are smart and you're the strong one that carries your chair and then because I've seen him do it himself. I remember there, was time, there are many times where we have meetings that um, he would see a lady who is standing and he would go carry the chair for the, for the woman to sit down. I mean, there are many examples I've seen. I've said this before the, online too. I mean, there is no lady in this house or around who, whose birthday would go unnoticed. And by, by, by saying on notes, I'm not saying Dr. Sunday will say happy birthday. No. When is that lady's birthday? Dr. Sunday would have a bouquet, would have a cake in the house made, would have um, some compote, I don't know what's going Yeah, some drinks. juice, some drinks. And guess what? Everybody in the house must come to this place to honor. and honor that woman. Oh. And this is for everybody, every lady in this house. But for guys, when is our birthday? <laughs> <laughs> you can even <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> so and you no, know, in many, in many, I, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen Dr. Sunday's respect for for women and ladies, and I'm learning sincerely. I know I'm working on myself, what, but you know, what somebody is shouting yeah. somewhere. I said with for men and gifts. Yeah, and gift definitely. But the the focus <laughs> is the focus is that Dr. Sunday. I mean, if you're with him, um, you definitely would give honor to ladies. You would notice those, um, those places where you can open the door for the lady. She's coming down the staircase. You give a hand. You, I mean, you just want to give that support. But, you know, we are fighting a stereotype. A stereotype and, and change is not very easy. Sometimes we... We miss it, but thank God for someone like him. But well, somebody will come and thank me one day after the, you marry her. You will say, ah, who influenced this young man to become like this? Well, and if you refer to me, she will say, ah, thank God. But <laughs> somebody let me come and thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sunday. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. So um, I'll quickly announce the books that I have with me here. 
the first book is how to be in the here and now i mean my story just talks about this book um how to be in the here and now, how to be conscious I, i've read this book i'm practicing it i'm working on it and you also have to learn um how to be in the here and now so please do well to get this book how to be in the here and now see how to be conscious so i don't give it to the rights <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in the here now. You have to be in the here now. Because by default, it goes right. <laughs> and that's a woman's <laughs> sister. And she's a woman's sister. Thank you, bro. <laughs> All right. Your tomorrow depends on the actions you take today. Well, this is a book that we all need. How to make your future today. You can make your, your future from today. And... Um, so please do well to get this book. Your tomorrow depends on the actions you take today. All right, uh, we've learned about systems and um, Dr. Sunday talked about the book titled, Hello, I'm Searching for Problems. And this book is titled, Problems, Your Shortcut to Prominence. And you know, we've understood that with systems, we can resolve every problem. So, we're, we already have the key to resolving problems. So if Dr. Sunday is saying here that problems are your shortcuts to, to prominence, and you already have the key, so that means you are the next influential person, and you're the next person who would rise to prominence. But do well to and get And that is book. the third one about money, where there is problem, there is money. Yeah, where there is problem, there is money. But I don't have the book here. But there's another book, actually, about problems, that where there is problem, there is money. So, and you already have the key to resolving all problems. Great. The next book I want to announce here is the book titled Life's Greatest Secret. Well, this is one book that you, you sure want to read. I mean, imagine Dr. Sunday sharing his greatest discovery in life. I mean, you want to get that book to know what is this man's greatest discovery in life. So that is what you discover in this book, Life's Greatest Secret. You're going to discover that truly life is not mysterious and you're going to discover dr sunday's greatest secret this book is full of principles trust me it's full of principles that would help you to achieve at least the kind of success that dr sunday has achieved you know um raised in a very religious background we believe in the god of miracles mm -hmm. but somehow they didn't introduce to us the god of systems God of miracles. You're not my papa. <laughs> <laughs> so, Only be with. Yeah. So we know the God of miracles, but we don't know that God is a God of systems. God has already created the greatest miracles. Mm. Now it's time for your own miracles. Yes. The miracles that you will do by using the miracle that He had already given you. But we still expect. <laughs> we don't know that it's our turn to now create miracles. Yeah, I mean that's what Dr. Sunday writes here. Actually, he says how to be, how to become the one who creates miracles instead of the one who seeks after it. And I think this is a, a big challenge to all of us that there are some things that miracles won't do for you, but you can become a miracle worker yourself. The name of the book is what is ha what miracles will not do for you. What miracles will not do for you? Well, this is also one of my favorite books. Oh, wow. That book is, is, is hidden. Many people don't know about it. Yeah. One of the greatest books they will ever read. I mean, how to win in life. You know, well, you can't read this book and be comfortable. You're going to be on the edge. You, you're going to be thinking, where was I in this yeah. life before? Yeah. Why nobody ever told me this thing? I mean, you know... Many times we see people who succeed, but we don't know what makes them succeed. We see people who win in life, but we don't know what made them win in life. But imagine reading a book that will give you all of the... A to Z. I mean, the A to Z of how to win in life, how to come out victorious in life. I mean, I don't know if... What are you waiting for if you've not gotten this book? I've read it, and this is a book that definitely... You don't read once and you say you're done. You keep reading yeah, yeah. every time. Of course, you want to be a winner in life. So the title of this book, once again, is How to Win in Life. All right. So I'll go to the next set of books here quickly. Um, I am a person. Am I a personality? Uh, you know, 
<laughs> this book is very close to the book um, A Man or a Mouse. And if you with if you follow Dr. Sunday, there are some vocabularies that would be so familiar to you, and one of them is biomass and personality. And uh, you would really discover that it is not enough for you to just be a human being. You need to reinvent yourself and work on yourself to build yourself to becoming a personality. So, yes, you're a person. Yes, you're a human being. But you know, to be born is not enough to become a personality. That you're a man doesn't mean you're a personality. So this book will give you the tips, the secrets, the principles on how to shift from being a biomass to becoming a real personality. Is the book that you rewrote, I mean, read, and, and it developed a program through which a influenced 30,000 30, 30, youth. youth. So this book. And our 3,000 disciples. disciples. All right. The creative and innovative power of a genius. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, we've learned that geniuses are not born, but geniuses are made. And the secret of all geniuses is that they have, uh, they are hardworking people. That is the womb of, of a genius. They are hardworking people. But even beyond that, um, you're going to discover that um, not only is Dr. Sunday a genius, but you also, you're a genius, and you have um, that ingenuity in you, but you have to discover it. But this book will give you more insight. I have not read this book, but I intend to read it definitely. The creative and innovative power of a genius. Of a genius, sorry. Okay, I've read this one, and you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is this book will awaken you. Yeah, I, I tell you, where are the heroes? Let heroes arise. Yeah, you discover the hero in yourself, and you discover that you don't have to wait for any other person to fix the to problems. To become the hero. Yeah, you will discover that you are the hero, and you. This would be like a wake up call for you. Like someone is ringing the bell, like, "Hey, wake up! Let the hero in you arise." And that is exactly what this book is saying. Where are the heroes? Let heroes arise. Right. So um, the last four books are the books that I've been announcing, and I'll just quickly go through them because I'm sure you've heard them over and over again. The first book is How to Find Money for Your Dream. You know, we had um, a session today that uh, one of the delegates here built a system on how to, how to find money for our dreams. And it was fantastic to see that just within these five days... People have learned to build systems. People have learned to build systems. I mean, what... As, I mean, a building that has been there for maybe nine years thereabout, but now she's discovered that she can build systems and she can find resources for her dream. So you, you want to get a hold of this book, How to Find Money for Your Dreams. All right. Well, process is the new result. <laughs> process is the new result. Process is the new result. You're going to value process you're going to see the benefits that are in process and you're going to be a person of process all right and then this beautiful book <laughs> system building you know i just feel like this book will become my personal guide that will be uh, maybe it will become a classic for generations for generations because i mean this book if you've read it you know exactly what i'm talking about this book is a book that everyone you must get it and you must buy it for your children and then also for your children's children, and it must be a you must inheritance. It must be an inheritance from one generation to another generation because this is the key to resolving every problem and attaining every goals. System building, and of course the last uh, let's call it a book, but it's a daily planner, anyways. So this is a daily planner, and this daily planner was developed from. Dr. Sunday's book, Who Am I? Why Am I Here? You know, many of us have read that book, but we're still, we don't know how to accomplish our goals. You, okay, you've discovered that, yes, I have a burden for this, I have a passion for this, but where do I start? How do I start? How do I accomplish my goals? But this daily planner would help you. Now, look at it. It will help you to accomplish your goal within one year can you believe that within one year 
But what makes this wonderful is that it, be, it, it becomes your day-to-day -day guide. That you see what to read every day, quotes to read, counsels for each day, daily tasks, and then you have a feedback system for yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've not seen anything like this ever, ever. You want to get this daily planner for yourself. And even more, you can use this daily planner for your children. For you, training. You can for use coaching. it also for training, for coaching. So please seminar. do well. For seminars. Yeah, for seminars. I mean, just it, it becomes a very useful tool for you to help people discover their purpose and accomplish it. All right, so please do well. It is Daily Planner, how to accomplish your goals and your purpose within a year. All right, so thank you, my dear brother. Uh, thank you so much, our viewers, for being for uh, this um, introduction. I would like to also announce that Zook, yes. if you want to partake in the HMT promo, please write to us at dsasbooks at gmail.com. Uh, if you would like some of the delegates to also help you in bringing some books, uh, you could write to, to DSAS Books and we'll see what we can do before they leave. All right, so um, Dr. Sunday is here, and guess what? This is the final session for this HMT. Some delegates are like, we wish we can have another week. <laughs> but then I'm not really sure about that. So maybe they, they, would have to, they would have to testify to that. But <laughs> Dr. Sunday is here, as you can see, and I would like to hand over to Dr. Sunday. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Who is, who is that? Who, uh, who, who wants to read today? For the last day. It might not be you. It could be somebody else today. <laughs> Loud and clear. You have to be, you have to be sure because you don't want to run into me. You don't want to run into me. Okay, okay. You have to be strong and loud. <clears throat> All right, guys. Welcome, everybody, to the final session of this HMT. Possibly the last HMT with Dr. Sonda Delajah in Ukraine. It could be my last HMT altogether in this country. Uh, if God we. We normally say, if God will answer our prayers. <laughs> but if God will see to it that this is, uh, my time is up in Ukraine and it's time to get to Nigeria, then this will be the last HMT in this country. So uh, there are a few things I want to do. First of all, I want us to start with uh, a letter from somebody who has been watching us. And uh, can we have that letter? And after that letter, I want us to listen to everybody about your projects. Just to say, if you uh, to name, to tell us about the project you are defended here and the systems that you have built while, while you've been here, the ones you defended every day. But let's see the letter first. Good morning, DSA. No, no, strong and loud. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's why I didn't want her to take the. I didn't want to tell, to have to tell her like that. Okay. So I can tell the man like that, but. <laughs> Good morning, DSA. No, stronger <laughs> and louder. <laughs> you are a military. You did, this no, one is a military right. job. Oh, okay. Yeah, this that seat is a military seat. <laughs> you have to, yeah, it has to be strong, strong and loud, like we are commanding an army. Okay. Good morning, DSA. I was thinking of you half of the night. I stayed up to do some paperwork as I fly to Isle of Man this morning and returning on Monday afternoon. I am meeting the ICT company. You see, st stop a minute. Just a minute. The guy would, could not sleep all night after, you know, all these two days, I mean, a few days of the HMT yeah. uh, on system. He couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he was just thinking of, of how much this is going to change people's lives and his life. Because there was a teaching of mine that he had listened to that has changed his life before now. So he's just thinking about how this one also is going to change his life. I am meeting the ICT company who are taking on my project development and design. Your prayers are coveted, sir. I followed through briefly the HMT running so far, and I can't stop reflecting. But I go back 
to one key life thing you taught everyone, but imparted on me singularly. <laughs> He's very confident that he, he had the most impact. I do not think anyone on earth got it the way I did. Wow. So, so, so people, maybe you should be ready to argue with him. Or <laughs> I think Dr. Anu will try to argue with him. <laughs> yes. Bragging a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, if you see his result, what he has done with that one revelation, you will understand that, yes, yeah, maybe he's, he's right. That no one on earth got that revelation and used it the way he has used it. But he's going to mention the revelation now. So, taste that later. Okay. You talked about solitude some couple years back. This is one of the most life changing revelations for me and my family. I started practicing it for the first year and it was hard. Gradually, I got into the realms of it. And do you know that all my inventions were born out of each solitude I have taken? It, it became, he started going to solitude and he, and he became an inventor. And each solitude, each solitude, he will come back with a new invention. Now he's traveling this weekend to some places for people who want to, who want to sponsor some, you know, the different negotiations, who want to buy over or sponsor all these inventions. He's, I mean, worldwide something. His name is going to be known soon, like Mark Zuckerberg's name, worldwide, mm -hmm. because of what he had just designed, just because he started practicing solitude. Before then, he was just an IT person going to work. Mm -hmm. But when he discovered the secret of solitude, but in, in Great Britain, for somebody to be taking five to 10 days every month, every month, five to 10 days, even though I recommended three to seven days, but he's doing five to 10 days, that just exploded him. Just like it exploded me in God with all these revelations. The same thing that happened to him, but in the area of his profession. Going away for five to ten days maximum since on each occasion, I haven't reached your level yet. <laughs> but it's done well. Once we talk next week, I will be able to share some of the things I have experienced in one which is so amazing regarding the system building which the Lord taught me, a pinch of the hole you have been teaching on HMT. And realizing how fitting it is to you, to your teaching, I am overwhelmed. You know what, DSA? Please keep on what you're doing for the sake of us, our children and grandchildren. Please and please do not stop. I have created three educational products that would be bigger than Facebook and LinkedIn in the next three to five years. And he's a black man. He's not a Nigerian, but he's an African living in the UK. Something that, has, that will be bigger than Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, uh, LinkedIn, Link, LinkedIn, yeah, or what do you call it? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So can you imagine what solitude can do for people? So if we know God and we say we are believers, what is our product? Because we are not following the principles Work hard as if everything depends on work, and then depend on God. Also, seek God as if everything depends on God. He started using that principle, true solitude, and then everything exploded. So, Pastor Sunday is not a spirit after all. Pastor Sunday is not special. He just discovered some truth, and that's why I wrote the book, my my life's greatest secret. My life, my is it life's greatest secret? Life's greatest secret. My greatest discovery in life. That's why I wrote it. Any, you know, I'm not special, but I discovered some truth. And those truths I'm sharing with the world, and he has discovered it too. They aren't, they aren't launched, they are not launched yet for the sake of delayed patent rights. I will just mention one or two. I have created a software that is able to grade research work, dissertations, and university course automatically without lecturers having to manually mark the work. That will be a landmark. Can you imagine? No need for lecturers. And that is because of system, the one we spoke about. That we should, you know, education should, we should start from primary, secondary school, so that people will begin to write apps like this. And for any problem, they could write apps. And also, they could write, uh, what, the app and, 
what I talk about, and startups. Yeah, so that they could begin to, if we teach them system, they'll begin to just, any problem they see, they begin to come out with the invention. Okay. This is receiving a nationwide embrace as testing are currently going on in the UK and gradually would go across global universities. I am trusting the Lord on this. One person taking over all universities of the world. Thanks to invention. Soon, you will also hear of the name Big Campus. This is a social media platform for university students all over the world where they can share university experiences, cross university debates on academic issues and platform where students can promote their final dissertation and thesis by online seminars. No more should our final research only end on university shelves. Well, what do you think about that testimony? You see why I couldn't sleep? Because it got another revelation through the systems, yeah, and they couldn't sleep. Oh. Well, I think it deserves a, plus, a round of applause. Oh. Just by using those principles we are talking about. Okay, no, now before I go, today we are going to be talking about the new Nigeria project. The new Nigeria project. I'm going to do a presentation that is going to be broadcasted today. So congratulations to all the people watching us at home. Today, this, today's presentation will be live broadcasted. I'm going to be broadcasting it. So it's a little bit of secret, but not too much of a secret. It's not as secret as the ones we, we had shown. The ones we have shown are more, you know, but these ones I'll be able to show. Everybody can see but before we see that, just like we are hearing the testimony, because you are hearing testimony of somebody who has been following me for some time, for two years or more, and we just read this letter. But also, let us hear from people who came to this HMT their results. So I want everybody to stand up and speak about his own project that you presented, that you defended today, I mean, this whole week. And anybody can also, somebody can also talk about the group project. You know, you had groups, right? You, you had group projects and you had individual projects. Yes. So talk about anyone you want. Let's do it fast. Who starts? You start. Okay. You might need to, uh, no, you don't need to stand. You are in front this time. Okay. Um, okay. You yeah. want to talk about the group or individual first? No, anyone you feel like. You can talk about the two. You can do the two. Okay. Because the idea for the people who are watching us at home is that the idea is that imagine it, people here are already building systems. Beautiful idea. People here are already building systems. So we are talking about system building and people now are experimenting. They are talking about the system that they are building already. Okay, let's start. Does he need to, does he need to, does he need to show you? To no, he doesn't need to show you. You just need to talk about it. I explain it to people. Okay. So the individual project which I worked on, um, it's, a, it's a digital skills enhancement platform. Move closer to high a bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's good now, it's good now. Good. It's a digital skills enhancement platform um, that is being built to close the gap, the skill gap uh, for IT professionals. Um, initially, it's gonna be launched for UK-based IT professionals, uh, but the objective is for it to actually extend across to any part of the world. Um, so, just, sorry, I'm just going through. So, yes, so it is aimed at reaching out to 5,000 professionals uh, within the digital technology space. And the timeline would be over the next two years. So, that's a system that is born there, there. Uh, so the unexpected um, aspects here is that it's going to cover a diverse um, aspect of the IT discipline, uh, the technical side of things. Um, in terms of benefits for users of this platform, uh, they will be entitled to free webinars and 50% discounts um, as subscribers. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to get a hands-on template to successful delivery of their niche technical discipline. In terms of the resources, I'm partnering, I will be partnering with about four subject matter experts in the form of modal content leads, and we'll be relying on this virtual platform, which is under production, 
We'll also be relying on the contents of the model that will be delivered throughout the platform. We'll be relying on our skills and our competence as IT experts and the processes as well, which we'll be instituting. Uh, with regards to the timeline, uh, the aim, as I said, it will be over two <coughs> years. So um, that breaks down to about 2,500 IT professionals over the next 12 months, 208 IT professionals in one month. 48 IT professionals in a week, um, and approximately eight IT professionals in a day, excluding the weekends. Uh, so, expectedly, we'll be looking at delivering two free webinars every week using the four SMEs, four free, four premium webinars, and four playback pre uh, premium webinars every eight weeks. In terms of the team, as I said, it will be myself, my humble self, and four other experts uh, who I'm partnering with. Uh, interestingly, there will be opportunity for more partners as time goes, and it will benefit project managers, test analysts, business analysts, developer engineers, uh, web analysts, digital marketers, and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of the product offering, so what sort of, um, what sort of specialist coverage are we going to be having? It will extend from geospatial technology uh, to the health sector as well. It will have digital transformation, uh, target operation model, cyber security, data protection, information governance, uh, CRM implementation, data analytics, business intelligence, and um, DevOps engineering. There will also be some element of machine learning, Internet of Things, uh, robotic process automation, and augmented reality. So, just quickly concluding on that, um, I gave a little bit of a background around some of the partners that I'll be working with. One of them happens to be a seasoned consultant in information governance, data protection and cyber security space within the last 15 years, experience in professional services. Yeah, that's not necessary anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of delivery, uh, we'll be relying mainly on the platform. There'll be webinar schedule that will be built into the platform. So a lot of it is all going to be digitally managed, all the activities. In terms of the backup system, we'll rely on the people, the processes, the documentation, the testing, the service level, and the technology, of course. In terms of monitoring, um, again, we'll rely on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Padot for sales, marketing, and business intelligence. As I said, this platform, which is under production, uh, will manage and control all the activities. In terms of encouragement. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of encouragement, I think I've covered that one. Yeah. So the aim is to reach out to and add value to 5,000 IT professionals across the globe. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Let's go to the next person. Meanwhile, what did you defend? What did you present? What project? I have not presented mine. <laughs> I, uh, but what do you intend to present? Okay. Um, it's, uh, my task was to get 30,000 youths off the street. And I picked uh, a small city in Nigeria. So I said it's to educate uh, them about HMT, to renew their minds and release them back into society with acquired technical skills for success. From the 30,000 youths, 10,000 will be disciples from there. And they will be committed to the program after the two years, and they will duplicate the exact program in other cities and states. That's the plan. The time limit is two years from when the youth enters the program. For the available resources, the first resource is myself. It's my skills, my talents, my degree, and my life experiences. And also part of the resources are the youths themselves, because the youths are, I intend to support are youths that are free, that, have, that are pretty much not in school, that are on the street. So they are resources themselves because they have the time. And because it's Nigeria, I was also thinking that it's a great weather there, so you don't have to do too much out, um, indoor stuff, you can do stuff outside as well in case uh, getting a building is going to be a problem. Also, if we do have a uh, building, we'll have rooms and houses and some uncompleted buildings 
donated. And also part of the resource are youths that already have uh, skills such as cooking and cleaning. That's part of their resources. <coughs> uh, for number four, divide the task by the time. So I divided uh, this task into four different uh, seasons, pretty much because it's two years. It's the first one to six months, followed by, the, by month seven to 12, then month 13 to 17, and month 18 to 24. So the first six months, they will be doing basic literacy skills of reading, writing, doing some topics such as uh, uh, HMT topics, such as the essence and value of life, which will teach them self-realization, self-care, and also will teach them to discover God and his purpose for their lives, and to teach them about kindness, justice, and righteousness. For months seven to 12, they will start doing chores and also continue topics such as purpose and understanding, HMT topics. They will develop their awareness and care for others at this point because the first six months will be more or less uh, learning to care for themselves. In month 13 to 17, they will learn technical, technical skills of their choice and also participate in HMT programs such as developing themselves as personalities. And for month, uh, month 18 to 24, they will graduate their technical program and also complete HMT programs such as system building. So which means there will be so many people dealing and resolving Nigeria's problems, like this, uh, you know, this program. Apart from what I'm doing, anybody could, once you learn system, anybody can do these things. And instead of just helping one person there, one person there, you could start a whole system that will be able to, well, anybody that wants to divide, that wants to continue sharing, just raise up your hand. Because maybe somebody has already defended their projects and you want to raise up your hand because we might not be able to go through everybody so that we don't miss out on the teaching. Anybody uh, anxious to speak? Okay, give, give, give them there. Right, so good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, so, all right, so I've developed a system. I'm very passionate about self-education, and I'm taking my self-education really seriously now. I'm, develop I'm developing my personal self-education system. Now, a product will be born out of this self-education system, which is going to be a blog. But let me just go through what I've done. All right, so my task is to intensely now start to self-educate. And um, up until now, I've been self-educating by reading one DSA book a week. But now I want to go topical, so I want to um, take some topics each month, and I want to develop myself on those topics. The topics I have so far are on systems building, kingdom life, time management, family, money and financial independence, nation building, and I'm moving into a new career, which is business intelligence. So I'm self-developing on that as well. Uh, my, the resources I have are, I'm developing my mind. So my mind is my first resource. Um, time is another resource on my side. Um, then books. Um, in the initial stages, I'll primarily be educating myself with books by DSA, because they are the only ones right now that have what I'm looking for. Um, they are based on laws and principles, and that is what I want to do. Now, in addition to that, I'll also be building systems based on whatever um, I am studying, the topic I'm studying at the time. Um, other resources I have are messages on Dr. Sunday's YouTube channel, um, SoundCloud, Pastor Sonja Adelaja SoundCloud, and um, www.sonjadelajablog.com. Now, I have created a schedule of how I want to self-educate. I mean, I'm hoping to invest in six me? hours every day. I'm hoping to in invest a minimum of six hours every day. And the schedule I have where, unfortunately, we can't see it, is I'm going to be doing three hours in the morning from 3 a.m. in the morning till about 7.45 in the morning. And then I have Uncle Sam from 8 till 4. And when I come back in the evening, I will self-educate again from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening. Now, my monitoring system will be my personal integrity. So I'm sticking my integrity to the fact that I'll, I'm going to stick to this daily schedule. Now, I mentioned that there's going to be a product as a result of this exercise of self-education. And I'm taking my mandate 
from Matthew 28, verse 20, where Jesus is what well, Jesus is telling us to teach these new disciples everything he has instructed us. So as Let, let's check the microphone. Let me see the microphone. Is there any problem there? Bring it, let me see. Okay, so you know, we said we shouldn't be putting it under this thing. So, you don't know who did it? Okay, we don't put it under here because it's destroying it. That's why we can't, it's spoiling this something. Okay. I try to talk on it so you don't see. We are trying to fix the microphone there, so. Okay, let me give this one meanwhile. Okay, so I was um, sharing about the self-education system I've put in place, and I was telling us about the schedule I've put in place to subject myself under. Um, it's going to be six hours every day. It's going to be, I'm going to start at three o'clock in the morning till about 7.45. Um, then I head up to my Uncle Sam, um, and then I'm going to self-educate again from five till about eight o'clock in the evening. Now, the main part of my self-education is I'm going to be producing a product. And the products I'm going to be, that will be coming out of my self-education is um, a blog. Now, I'm creating this blog because um, I believe from this self-education, I believe I have a unique voice, I have a unique story, and I have a unique experience. I'm also on a journey of self-discovery. I'm on a journey of self-actualization and self-development. And I feel it is incumbent on me to share what I've been learning on this journey. Um, I am also on a journey of self-education and I'm taking an adventure into God. I'm encountering superior, superior knowledge and I'm being fortified with understanding and I want to share all this truth with the wider world. So my plan um, for, my, for, this pro for the blog I'm going to be creating as a result of this self-education is I'm going to dedicate every first hour of my waking moments. That's going to be from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Um, I'm going to invest in it in writing up these articles for my blog. Um, before I actually launch the blog, I'm tasking myself within the next month to create 15 articles. Um, I'm going to start off by posting one article a week. But as I get better with my writing speed, I will increase this to two articles a week. Um, I'll be investing in a Grammarly Premium account to help me with grammar and spelling mistakes. Okay, and another task I'm going to have is um, I'm going to now have to sit down and build a system of how I'm going to get this blog to get to as many people as possible. I haven't taken out the time yet to determine how many people I want it to be, but whatever it's going to be, I'm not going to have to produce a system that will now take this um, blog to as many people as possible. Thank you. Who's there? Anybody willing to defend their office? Tell us what you have defended or uh, the project that you spoke about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine. We are waiting for our sister to open our device and tell us. Yeah, my system build is to transform lives of young adults I'm sorry mm -hmm. to transform lives of young adults and youths 
to the tune of 1,000 in a year. So the task is 1,000 outreaches, which brings it down to four per day, excluding weekends. And the goal is to help them from hopelessness, joblessness, homelessness, and idleness. My plan is to go out around 9 a.m. in the morning, looking and talking and extracting information from these age groups. Because from, ex from my experience and research, I've seen that around that time is when those with jobs are idle about. So, and I've tried to engage in conversations with them. So, if I manage to get four people per day, my resources is me and the acquired knowledge I've had in this country because I've been to the job centers in Britain to inquire about how it works because they help a lot of jobless people to connect them to prospective employers and um, able to secure jobs for them. So, and the formula is as stated before above, which is um, target is 1,000, simplified to get to four per day. And once I get those four per day, then we'll form a team. Fortunately, my area, geographical area, because I live in the redemption camp, mm -hmm. and my parents' house is in Surulere in Lagos. But I'll base my office to be in Surulere, Lagos. And then those four I'm going to start with will now be my outreach. But first, I'll mentor them, teach them how to I mean, approach people in order to gain their confidence. And then, then they'll be more comfortable in conversing and giving information out about them. And then because of my, I mean, knowledge of how to source out um, employers, to make contact with employers so that I already secured them um, contact with employers and I can get them employees. So the daily task will start from me, my office are creating cellulary and then send them out to get, I mean to have, since I've mentored them and teach them on the proper way of addressing people, and all that. My backup plans will be continuous training and making leaders of them. The control system will be phone calls, SMS, emails, and checking up on them. Because I mean, at that age, they are fond of um, being distracted at work. So since I'm always in the office with them every day, they'll be able to concentrate and know what they want to do. The reward system is because, I mean, from, from my knowledge, if I seek, I mean, if I, ha if I help employers to get employees, there is commission charge on that, which would be the salaries for the, I mean, the office-based workers, and then updating and training ongoing will be provided for them. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, <laughs> the voices of our people today are so low, yeah. almost <laughs> depressing. Really? But, uh, <laughs> but the old, the, what we want to get is the concept. And the concept is that we have only been together for five days for this agency. This is the fifth day. Five days only. 
and everybody's already created their own systems. So right there, you can see a formula that we want to apply in Nigeria. I would gather thousands of people and we would train them to see problems, to respond to problems, and to build systems of how to solve those problems and also how to, you know, resource it, to resolve the problem of resources and things like that. So we know that every problem could be resolved. By the time we, we raise up one million people re addressing one million problems at the same time. You see, you see so this is a mini, a, a mini project or a mini, a miniature uh, prototype of what we will do in the Niger, Nigeria. Train people to see and address problems and bring solutions. If we could do that, we are not going to wait for government anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, so what should we do? Should I go to the presentation, Nigerian presentation, or we should keep on listening to, to your projects? Nigerian presentation. Nigerian presentation, okay. I, because I heard that somebody presented also about how to find money. Okay, anybody wants to, you want to talk about that? Or what? Okay. Okay, what do people think? Should we just go to the project presentation or we should listen to one? Presentation. Okay. Presentation. Presentation. Yes. So that's me. Yes. Right, Nigeria presentation. Okay. All right, so if we do presentation, Take down another main, another screen with uh, camera. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. You know what? No, go ahead and go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk. Will they will be the last one. Paka na bude gavari te peri story camera mori. Okay. So, Pastor, okay. are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the financing of Redeemer Praise Church, 107 South Pines, San Antonio, Texas. Um, Can you speak louder, please? Because, like I said, our, your voices, starting from Igwe, was too low. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, he said the tone for all of you speaking so low. <laughs> what? The f okay. I should go over there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here. Yeah. You give it to Okay, the financing of Redeemer Praise Church, 107 South Pine, uh, San Antonio, Texas. Um, this church needs remodeling. Uh, it's a historic building that was built in 18, the 18th century, 1860 something, 64. And um, we bought it and we wanted to just uh, put a story building so we can have a boardroom and counseling center and stuff. And when we removed the sheet truck, we found that they had been burnt and with the charcoal still there. So we were stuck because we have to redo everything on the inside. So the goal is to raise 120,000. And the time of completion will be 12 months. And the resources will be myself, um, 50 members, I have uh, 50 members, I have 20 volunteers, and, and these volunteers come from all over San Antonio, from big churches, because they see what we're doing, and their churches just lock up the doors on Sunday and don't open until the next Sunday, so we're looking for where to help. And then I have 30 partners that help, you know, send some um, every month, some whenever they have a need, they feel like it. Then above all, I have God. Then um, time management. I divided the 120,000 by 12 months, um, which would be 10,000 every month. Then divide by the 50 members, would be 10,000 divided by 50, which would be $200 a month which means that every member will bring in $200 every month. And then divide by four weeks. I chose four weeks. And so sometimes months have five, but I chose the four weeks. It'll be $50 per week. 
and then uh, the location in San Antonio. That's where everybody will be. Um, now, um, like I said to the team, I had um, a social church without even realizing it. I have a Saturday church uh, where we give out groceries and love on the people, you know, and close the you know homeless and give them a place to shower and stuff like that. And then I have the church on Sunday that's very, very serious and they want to read the word of God and pray. And that's the team I'm talking about, the 50. So I have, uh, I took 10 team members out of the 50. So they will, rep so it will be five under each one of them. So Rhonda, uh, okay, I'm not going to call their names. So um, I have these 10 team members that will oversee the 50 members. And they will see that every Sunday this morning is turned in. And um, I will see to it that uh, I've been after church. We will have a meeting to see how far we've gone to our goal every Sunday. Um, then my backup plan will be the volunteers and, the, um, and my partners. Now, some of my volunteers, they are veterans. In fact, I have one who is who's a millionaire who brings us breakfast every second Saturday. And until I came to this meeting, it never occurred to me that I had my resource there. And I've been praying for since 19, uh, 2010 when I bought the building. I've been praying for 20000 to fix it. And I'd, I have the money right there. The resource is there to do it. It's there to do it. So, um, the money, money, uh, monetary so system. Prayer, uh, <laughs> system is stronger than prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, the monitoring system, um, somebody gave a very wonderful suggestion that I should have the bank account out so people just pay directly into the bank account. Also, I realize that some people even send money through PayPal directly into our account. Okay, so the reward system will be um, thank you cards, affirmation, and gift certificates. Then um, I intend to um, set up a prayer breakfast to thank the donors and present the program. Uh, I forgot to say that um, I've had a lot of things on TV. I've been on the front page of Nigerian newspaper, the San Antonio newspaper, and then the eighth, the eighth page, all the things that we do. I've been on TV several times. I've been chosen as one of the people that makes San Antonio great. So I was going to ask um, someone to help me put all of these things into a file, and and where I will talk about the things that I do. Well, you saw the way the old woman did it today. Yes. You have a model right there for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and let, um, uh, and you present, enjoy the old woman? And present it to this, uh, to me, present it to these people and let them know what we do so that we can continually have a source, a resource of funding. Beautiful. So are you people seeing what I'm saying that my strategy in Nigeria is exactly what I've done here. It's a, it's a prototype. <coughs> Can you imagine me meeting and doing HMT like this every week and preparing 1,000 at a time or 10,000 like this and teaching them how to own problems, how to adopt problems, like just like you are doing right now. Then monitoring them and, you know, helping them, you know, being a mentor to them and helping them. That, one, that we will get a list of all problems in Nigeria and we will get 10, 10 people, 100, 100 people to adopt each one, each problem. That's how we change the nation. Just five days, all of you are already adopting, you know, taking charge of different problems. Just because you got to know truth and you are building systems for them. Then when you train other people and teach them to build systems also for their problem, all that they will see. Everything changes. Give me the microphone.
condition. Sorry. <laughs> So, okay, guys, are you all ready for, to move forward? Yes. Okay, because uh, this is going to be, it would demand your attention. Maybe, or you want to come close again, like we did? Yes. Yeah, you might need to come closer. Uh, no, don't, don't drag the thing, though. Just make sure you take, be patient and take it. Yeah. No, no, no. This time, everybody has to carry their own. <laughs> Not beyond there, because the camera now. Yeah. So oh, sorry, please. Somebody can still come. If you move this a bit there, someone can still come here. Yeah. Don't drag it. If you want to come, you have to take it. No, somebody has to come here. I don't, no, then if he can come here, then you stay there. No, just take, no, no, no. No, you have to do an excellent job. Let him take that off the road. Then you bring this here. Right. You say patience, patience. <laughs> All right, we are trying to position ourselves so that we'll be able to see better what we are going to do. So this I can show to I, I can show to the world. So the idea is that we want to create a new Nigeria, brand new, from the scratch. You already know what we are talking about. Yes. But today I want to give the ideology, the ideological background of the new Nigerian project. So I want to present to you our, our ideological approach, our thinking, our mindset, what informed our decision to want to uh, create a new Nigeria. No, Nina, another podash. Puska, puska illusion. Talk about podash. It's a shame. Got to watch that guy. I'm going to attack.